All right, folks, we get started. Welcome to our monthly workshop meeting. Um, thank you, thank you, board commissioners, uh, for our typical mon uh, monthly meetings. Our Wednesday night, our business meeting, and we take any formal votes that we can take action on. Uh, tonight, our workshop meeting is a little less formal, but a lot of times longer. Uh, we're going to hash out some of the issues. Uh, and I also will note, we did start last month and we continue to post the video reviews on our website. The next day as well. If you have to work after that, if anybody wants to change it. Uh, Commissioner Morris is on vacation this week, although he did mention he may come on uh, the Zoom to check in if you want. But other than that, uh, we are all here. Greg, we have any three attendees who are Zoomers? All right, so welcome, uh, Zoomers. Our workshop meeting, we typically start with uh, matters for our engineer, which we're doing. And then he can be on Zoom again, right? Uh, and then I'll pull the audience for whatever items you're here for. So we'll be sure to get those first. If you choose not to stand, mm -hmm. Matt's here for the next play basketball. And then we have a presentation about his ability to make solar panels. And try to do right into the solution. Mike, can you share any public comments you got this week? Sure can. We have two public comments that were received right around the five o'clock hour. One was from a resident in Erdenheim who advocated for maintaining 75% resident participation in any of the uh, permits that we grant for the use of park facilities. And the other one was from also an, an Erdenheim resident who noted that the board would be talking about the East Mill Road trail connector later this evening and thinks that's a great idea. Uh, but also wanted to advocate or make a push for the Crescent Trail. All right, thank you, Mike. Uh, all right, let's dig in. And uh, Tim, where's yours? Great, Tim, thank you. Not too much on my agenda tonight. Give me a little bit of an update on the parking guys. Um, last week, we opened bids for our Skyline Drive Convention Place Electrical Project. We only received one bid. It was a bit higher than my estimate. And so I'm going to ask the board to hold off on consideration of the reward of that bid because um, I did speak to the contractor. He had some questions with regard to quantities and scope. Uh, hopefully, we get a new out on site, uh, give a little more directions, and then we can talk about how we could possibly have that bid applied. Sort of doing a little bit of the process. Let me get over step one first, Jim, and see if we have a whole number. And so I'll talk to you guys about how we. Um, DEP, and like MS4 project. And Tim, oh, just just take curiosity because we've had a couple of those projects around the township. Yes. Were you surprised that some of the other groups that have done some of the similar work have not? Yeah. Well, you know what? We we got a couple of bids from a couple of other contractors for similar work, and they will always outbid what I more seem to be the one who has the I guess more proficiency with certain areas. Mm -hmm. That's basically the Google work. And I think guys are you know, prior to getting to the top. I'm not a one-dollar bidder, uh, but a bit higher than I expected it to be. So hopefully they will get on the bigger part of us. But generally, we've been, every project we've done has been pretty well. I'm absolutely I'm very happy with the work. But uh, it seems like they like working with us, we like working with them, and they seem to give us their best effort. And, and they're fair. They don't come in with a low bid and then beat you up with change orders. It, like the price is usually the price. Yep. And, you know, in the case of Sandy Run, where they had asked after the bid was done to substitute certain plant material with arborvitaes instead of that, they were happy to work with us to switch that out at no additional cost to it. So. And it's a funnier project from the standpoint that it's not like uh, there's a lot of asphalt. It's not like there's a lot of yeah. your resources that have like variable prices. Not a huge mm -hmm. work. But the bigger contractors who are used to doing for the kids are maybe not as interested in putting all the effort for the you know the bonds and insurance certificates and surveillance and doing all those things that come along with the project. Um, and it might be a little bit too big for some of the smaller landscaping guys who aren't prepared to do the project. And so Primar has seemed to be the company that did that. <clears throat> Great. The 
you've got to learn from PPP, you have to go to our email to find the twelve point three two. Um, I got a similar email from her last summer with regards to some board of the problem stuff. They seem to be on a, a path around the county to do a couple of things. Um, one is upgrade our storm store softball mapping. Um, two is do a little better job of reporting. Um, three, document our public education public outreach a little better and, uh, and describe to them what we have done. More specifically with regard to the daily line basin, uh, daily basin, uh, skyline line basin, uh, for the work that we're doing. So I'm sure uh, that the money that this work is all people are on and lots of things and buttons, uh, but you really ask that we put an effort toward uh, to reduce these documents and inform the people to be able to get those things. Um, I've been working with a woman that worked from the uh, Watershed Preservation and Conservation nonprofit group. She has helped me put uh, township work in PPP language. Mm -hmm. uh, and so she knows the bugs that Watershed would like county to use. I think I'm going to do this now, so I'm going to uh, kind of go over what we have and where she thinks we'll need to get the things to be the folks comfortable. Uh, these technology have been all part of that was with the watershed and consortium, uh, but uh, that being said, she still wants a little more in how we do it. Did she seem to be aware of what's going on with the West Second Clean Water? Yeah, but she said, you know what, I, I know what's happening with the consortium, but it doesn't, you know, really bring to us, but their obligation is to be a lot better than I'm going Public education. Oh, yeah, so. in-house controls. Yeah. That Ian and I attended a little seminar last fall at the Science Tower with regard to illicit discharge and protection of uh, 24 alcohols. Mm -hmm. She's happy to do it. All the works will be involved in this conversation. So I think it's a matter of just talking. So again, I was going to be here for a Thursday. And Ian, Ian's going to be in that meeting as well. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we'll get back to you guys about this just in a little bit. Mm -hmm. you're, you're fairly confident that our maps are, are uh, up to date? And... Well, what can, <laughs> well, how can they to the extent that they're there? They're there and they show the outfalls, but they the, the degree of descriptiveness that DEP is now looking for, it's like, Early on, they wanted a map that showed the outfalls. We did that. Now they want a map that shows the outfalls with the latitude and the longitude, and they want a photo of it, and they want mm -hmm. think about. It. And next year they're going to want something different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So legally, we're on like a, these are these are five year terms, right? These Correct. okay. So and the, the notes that I'm reading here is that the, our current one is expired. What, what does that We're mean? Expiring. Expiring. Yeah. So what's that mean for us? Something because we have been really trying to fill a couple of licenses out in the county who don't have current permits. And I think what is happening more than anything else is that EPA is yelling at Paris for DPP. Right. Yeah. Do, do something. Yes. Do something. Yes. So Paris for gets back to dark brown and says, hey, we got to get these people on board. And yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Norristown has really not assured this stuff. They've had some people yeah, lost yeah, people. Yeah. And uh, it's really hit hard for them, I think, to keep up with the interesting yeah. issue that's going on. But so, so in your professional opinion, we're not under any <clears throat> jeopardy because of our permit being no. expired or nearly expired or no. This point, we're just joining the rest of the club. Now, in fact, we'll we'll go to to extreme efforts to get a permit application in timely. Yeah, and then we'll wait. Yeah, and it could be a couple of years before <laughs> we hear back. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, just part of my ignorance, um, this permit coverage. What are we covering? What's the <laughs> you know? good question? Is that's a very good question. And so, this permit, this MS word permit, talks about our municipally separate storm sewer system. So it is the watershed that drains through our pipes, the park inlets, it's that network of infrastructure and that discharge through the creek. And so 
uh, operation of that system falls under this. And it's the current obligation of all of these things. You know, the location of the outreach, the housing of the facilities, um, what are we doing with the mulch pile, what are we doing with the waste oil, um, all of those things. Are we maintaining the stormwater ordinance? Are we forcing developers to get their permit? Are we using these records? Are we enforcing erosion controls at our construction sites? All those kinds of things fall under that industry. And if you fail to have coverage, what is the consequence? <laughs> uh, the, the most extreme consequence would be fines. But uh, at the state and federal level, is it? Yeah, most of the state level. Because if you can be officially by the power, it's a federal permit to officially by the state. I just mentioned it. I've had residents recently uh, present concerns about what goes into waterways, how to, whether they should test for it, or what's the frequency of testing, so on and so forth. All that to say that we don't necessarily. Good questions. Yeah, they're good questions. That's one of the things that the people have asked is we are, in theory, probably to test 25% of our systems pretty well. It's really dry weather. So we're supposed to take a look at these outfalls and going dry weather. Is there anything coming up? Obviously, we're going to be more allowed to use for wastewater. There have to be outfalls. Is someone illegally plugging the wastewater into the home for someone? Or is somebody discharging, you know, some kind of chemical process for some industrial facility? You know, and the guy who's changing radiators in the garage someplace and he likes to, you know, entries in the tree. Which we have found. Yeah. We have found people doing that, believe. Yeah. yeah. And so um, the reporting and the observation of the waterfall, how many of us are we looking for this? We have 170 some information channels. You know, it's something that we can do within possibly for the most part, you know, with our staff today. You know, we have once we have the outfall maps updated, they can go to each of the locations, take a look at everything from the out and yes, no, uh, there's things that want to sample and check and technology or methodology that the next step will have to process. Just for just for my, my quotation, because the residents just coincidentally just asked about some waterways on their property. 25%. Oh, yeah. So oh, yeah. we have all these places where any of our sports work system discharges into a water. And it's supposed to be an annual 25% of outfalls. So every four years, everyone should or at least observe the system. I think that's that's also good. Right. But by the same token, if someone does see in the kind of healthy pocket of three or four years and they get out there for work, um have one west where there's a filthy white substance that's coming out of the storm sewer. That follows back up and it's the turned it out it was a leader and the contractor was using to install the storm sewer pipes for the yet. So it's not hard to find, but it was a good question to come to the business. Where the fucking substance was coming from. Thank you. Great. A lot of the projects we've done over the last couple of years, the workshop that we had here on sort of stormwater management in general, does that count towards any of this or does? In fact, I sent to the video of that one house at the PDF for that last little meeting with the whole other residents. So, yeah, I sent a lot of information. Make sure you're pleased to see what we will actually do. Uh, I was talking to people a little earlier about a playground in Cisco. The playground equipment is going to run over our surface, it's all installed. Mm -hmm. um, we are working to finish up the site work. We have some paving to do to the trail, upon uh, grading and seating, fencing, signage. But uh, for the most part, the playground looks pretty good. Cool. Uh, I think what we just need is to have that open and back of all the improvements that we need essentially for us. Latest update on timing? 
Yes. So I guess you know it should be no no that's in this week the final grading that we see. I think it depends up more up to depend on the little bit as to when she wants to call it. Uh but it's whether we're testing the domain uh as Ellen earlier tonight we're trying to operate with a plus that we are in the contact so that we can find a the contact time is split down that's a good fact with the framework. Um Kathleen and Richard are both good, they did the jump on that bottom, they all thought that's good, they all pulled some weight and they pulled the other. So she asked about our ability to put kind of that black vinyl cover chain link down so it's like no that kind of uh, the concept that came back is almost twice the price of the black chain link of course. Well, Ian actually found a set of products of the chain link fence that we have used for other products in the building. Mm -hmm. um, recently, we have yeah, recently. Man, I, I mean, I've been buying that fence for the same price as the time. Mm -hmm. So we asked Farm Park actually to reach out to that supplier and see if they couldn't find a way to get black chain link fence at this time of the last Okay. Okay. The other thing I had on my agenda tonight was maybe any questions and conversation with our little bit of picture. We briefly touched on that last month um, about the benefits that the community would receive. Um, I'm trying to weigh the cost of that infrastructure and the trail of permanent to the length of infrastructure. So, any questions or maybe a on that topic? The big question I have, and it's been it's been voiced here before, I think, is you know the engineering cost seems so out of line with. You know the project costs. I mean, yeah, why, I mean, why is it so? Why for a pretty big number in that? I just don't know what. The, that the forty out of the one sixty twenty five percent is permanent. Yeah, yeah, that just seems like it's outrageous. And the issue that we're about is that this is a zig trail. Does not like major trails adjacent to the street level. Yeah. And we don't know how much trouble they want to give us in that review of permanent process. Maybe we can show them as a percentage of any percent law, they will sign off and they do. And that's the face the original impossible. Mm -hmm. But if we are faced with a lot of calculations, documentation, justifications, we want to make sure that we have enough in that grant budget to cover those events. Is there a reason why it snakes across? Um, and I don't know, I don't recall the other properties. Yeah, you know what? We just followed that existing top of school path. If there is there is a trail there today, it seems that as people move to the big neighborhoods, you know, there is some there's some rock and there's some roots and there's some you know kind of branch here, but it wouldn't take a lot of effort to kind of clear out those low hanging lakes, clean up that stream bank, and make that more accessible. It gets more complicated where you want to actually clear that trail, you know, put that pavement along the snow, create a new intersection, a new grading work, bring it across the lot. It gets a little more complicated than it takes to talk. Susie, the, the, the trail, uh, as Tim said, follows the existing um, warning path that people use. Um, and there's a fence there as well that it stays on that side um, between the, the fence and the creek. The way it's currently done, two other property owners, but you don't put the pieces on No, we actually own that one property. Yep. Um, and then the second property is this one right here. And we have this. That's not part of the same property. Yeah. Could it go over the lesser yeah. steep topography this way? It was probably the. Yeah, this oh, one does. It could. Yeah. It could. Yeah. But that yeah. encroaches more into yeah. the, the after the this is the area of the adjacent yeah. property. This one already. He has that stress. Yeah, he's, he's okay. On oh. the creek. Yeah. It, it's on the opposite side of the creek. Oh, doesn't really affect that. That's where the fences go up. It's just like, I don't know if it has a history of it. That's what it's about. 
Was the other property owner? Um, who is it? By the tennis court. Right? Sam Goodman. Cross. Yep. And they're, they're, they're good yep. with it. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the nice things about it is there is no acquisition costs for this trail on private property, which is big. big. Yeah. Real big. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, we're just getting an easement, right? We're not buying anything. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And is there's no sidewalk on 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 the north side of East Mill, is there? Correct. And that would be part of the the improvements for the trail uh -huh. because we'd want to get pedestrians who empty at East Mill Road safely yeah. on a on a paved surface of some sort up to the Poplar Road stop sign or okay. a crosswalk will be installed to get them across the across street, the street. Okay. where the sidewalks do exist. Okay. And the neighbors on Kelsey Way, you know, they came out in droves for the other issue um, mm. because they were concerned about one family's vehicles, additional foot traffic, obviously construction for a period of time. Are they amenable to this influx of uh, individuals coming through that way? The ones I've spoke to, yeah, yeah, okay. and like Mike said, they, I think they're using it now on an informal basis already. And that was Cedar Lane right off of there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but one of but one of the nice things, and in, in this is sort of ancillary, is that going back to when we had our in-house um, meeting for the trail plan last year, um, probably the one neighborhood that we got the most pushback from was that neighborhood, uh, you know, uh, along across the street. So mm -hmm. um, the hope would be is that we might be able to convert some people who might get to experience this trail adjacent to their neighborhood and be like, you know what, this is pretty nice. Um, and um, and maybe get some converts that way because they probably were the most vocally opposing sort of a, a, a trail network, so. Yeah, I, although I think the network would, I think the theory isn't that it's just a neighborhood connector trail, it's to, it is to connect to the ultimate, but that right. trail itself there should be a free one, right? So it's not necessarily purely a connector, uh, maybe at this juncture. You know, you just have to be reminded of when they come to the lake for public comments. Sure. Even though we don't get the current, uh, just a question of location, but let's do that. I guess the question is, where is this project? Um, the homeowner is a friend, and from just sort of being on his property and seeing um, the sort of the, the trail that exists or knew about it anecdotally, um, just talking to him and seeing if he'd be amenable to it. Um, he was, that sort of got the ball rolling in discussions. And then um, from there, hey, it, yeah, from there for us to where we are now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's already been said that one of the highly possible. Right. Yeah. Acquisition of easement because they're in the value. Yes. Oh, yeah. And I think, you know, one of the other kind of exciting things is um, I, I think this, it's a small trail, it's a little connector piece, but it has the, it's a very dynamic, like when you're back there, you're in the woods and you're along the, the, along the riverbed. Um, and there's few areas like that in the township that are kind of, you know, um, we could, we kind of feel like you're out in the middle of the nowhere. So, uh, I think it's a dynamic trail worth pursuing. And just a reminder, does it have to be an asphalt trail or is it, is it uh, sufficient to keep it mulched? Great question. Um, uh, I think that the first slide we had a couple of months back, we had a 50 trail. But I think the homeowner is more interested in the trail. And I think depending upon what kind of grant funding we are able to obtain for the construction part of it, 
we may have an obligation to create it in an accessible mm -hmm. format. Sure. Any erosion factor is would create an issue. Yeah, if you talk to the county, they pave everything to get yeah. maintenance purposes. Mm -hmm. So uh, you mentioned, um, or maybe the, the kind of planner mentioned, given we're trying to do the Walnut Avenue Trail Phase 2, trying to do these in conjunction, not necessarily in a hurry, but maybe when we were start the permitting, but maybe that's another budget here. Yeah, uh, one of the things that I had kind of floated out there was, you know, do we get started on some of the permitting parts of it, which isn't going to cost nearly, you know, at the, the, the high end, but get some feedback, you know, are we going to be held to a heck RAS study, like, you know, are we going to have these, you know, very involved, you know, um, historic and natural resource surveys, and, you know, like, what, what, what's the minimum we're going to need in order to kind of advance this? Um, kind of take your temperature, run it up the flagpole, and then, but, but, you know, do it in such a way that, you know, we've completed certain steps to get us that much further along. Um, and then, you know, later this month, we're going to be sending out budget memos to all the department heads, you know, that you're going to be into your budget discussions by the fall. So maybe we consider it, we have some feedback by then and we can budget accordingly or one or both. And there's an opportunity to get some. Sure. Sure. A lot of these, as I mentioned before, I think last month, um, in the case of Walnut Avenue Phase 2, um, they like to see a little bit further along in the permitting process, particularly when you're dealing with the waterways and in the case of Phase 2 of Walnut SEPTA, uh, make sure you've got your easements in place and um, they want a shovel-ready project. So are you saying that the expiration is one after 14? No, I think we're, we're lower than that on permitting parts of it. And I just go back to what I shared last month in terms of that Wall Street Journal article. And, you know, we, we could find dozens of articles on this, but um, now that not, not only do trails make sense, I, I, just, I find them to be imperative uh, at this day and age. And um, for getting kids outside, for getting them to explore the area, for getting them to go and just sort of be with other kids, um, it's tough. It's tough in our township, particularly when you have, you know, Church Road and Bethlehem Pike and then Mill and Hawes. I mean, these, you know, these are, these are busy roads. And so I think the more connections that we can create, I just think th these are sort of legacy projects that, um, you know, I think other things we do in terms of the, the stormwater management projects are, are great and they serve, you know, very good for uh, overall. But th this, I just find this to be some of the most important stuff that we can do. So um, I would love to see us move forward with all of it. Um, so the, the gentleman that we had the Zoom call with, it helps you out with a lot of these permits. Yes. I think Jason estimated 10 to 12,000 on the worst case scenario to do his permitting portion of it. Some of the balance is going to be, you know, your survey and depending upon what he needs. Yeah. Um, so if there's an appetite to try and get started, you know, maybe you set a dollar value, you know, it, it kind of like mirrors what Jason's costs are going to be. If you're interested in it, and then it kind of like gives you a start on the process, but you're not committing to the full, potentially forty thousand dollars. And we'll at that point have a better idea, you know, how which DEP person is, you know, got that biggest voice, you know, <clears throat> is it the one that's, you know, going to draw a hard line and say, 
no asphalt unless you do X, Y, Z and A, B, and C? Or is it the one who's saying, yeah, it's a good project, you know, this is a basically a dry creek bed for all but, you know, a, a storm. Um, let's be a little bit more pragmatic about this. No guarantees. I'm good with that approach. Okay. Also, want people to know too that none of these are either of the thing. The RP and the trailer can't be all of this, right? So there's other important connections to be done. But this is going to have to be Yeah, I just would be remiss to just reflect again that we, you know, in approaching budget season, that we can take a more proactive, maybe even more proactive approach of just allocating some dollars and that way we can know that we're working against those dollars and we can fix this trails and what have you. It's just just so we have some sort of basis to work from with the, you know, plus or minus whatever at the end of the year, then we know what we intended to invest and hope to do more. So that these when these things opportunities, serendipitous opportunities come up, we can see them reflected accordingly that hey, we we're trying to reach this, but we took away from XYZ project so we can access this project in this moment in time for the benefit of the you know, taxpaying citizen who's, you know, we did put together a trail plan and uh, this trail is a serendipitous one that wasn't collected there, but uh, for those who worked on the trail plan probably may have questions like the individual sitting here today, why this and not that, and might be good forward thinking going into budget season, create that line item so that we can work with that in the future. That's my only reticence to say right now. The urgency also is curious to me. Like, how do we engage those needs? Can we wait for the budget season? I don't know. Well, I think you know one thing I would say is this: I've been on the board for six years. Um, the trail projects don't come up all the time, and they they only my experience has thus far been that they come up very serendipitously when they're part of. A development project um, where all of a sudden private property gets opened up to negotiate to include a trail on but you know even Cresham Trail that for that individual who wrote in about Cresham Trail um, you know I mean like for instance one of the sections of Cresham Trail is that area along the, the country club that has been in you know we, there's nothing we can do about it right now uh, but I don't think there's any part of the Cresham Trail that really you know, we can move forward with right now that isn't on private property or, you know, which is very difficult to, to try to lift. Controlled by somebody else. Right. <laughs> so it's not like this is jumping the line ahead of a whole bunch of other projects that have been sitting there dormant. Um, you know, I, I, like I said, like I would love to move them all forward. It just happens to be, this is just, this is one that we can strike on right now. Um, and I don't think it's, I don't think it's pushing anybody back uh, further down the line at all. But again, the, the idea was, and this, this came up in those discussions in the, the trail exploration that, you know, we did little trails here and there. We did them along Walnut Ave. We did them here. It gets people excited. It gets them, you know, all right, now I'm open. We're willing to discuss the trail going around my property or behind my property or, you know, so um, hope is that this would kind of snowball greater activity. And I hope, I, mean, I hope that we just, proactively say it's, we're going to spend this much money on trails this year or, or shoot to right and then budget budget for it and, and try to get there and if we you know, fall short of it we choose to spend it somewhere else it's fine and if we have opportunities to say you know what more important than x y and z in that moment also fine for the future so any objections to move forward with the phase from yeah, it in the first phase steps we were steps you got to go you want to mention that the mount project is going to get underway? Yeah, absolutely. The trail? Recall that when the mount came through for their extension of the Virginia Pacific Project, one of the conditions was placed on that table was the solution of the plan, plan to show the trail down the city line from that project that extension. And um, the obligation was only the plan, but the mount, I guess, wanted to get a little bit of feel back to some. Uh, they want to install that trail today. So we're going to have to so leave those guys tomorrow. And uh, they're going to install the one that ran all the way from the driveway down to the extension. Um, we're going to stop short of the extension today. 
Um, I'd like to not give any preference to county people and talk county material before the talk group will form. And I'll send the next thing to you to uh, fill up six months up and more about where you're going to go. All of that needs to kind of work together. I'm not sure that the town is completely finished with the bond funding or funding material. So there will be a time when we have to see the There's that and did the county give any indication about where that trail under non farms? I mean, it was supposed to be done last fall. <laughs> no, we really didn't. Yeah, that's a new one. With the county people and uh, and and close. We're still working to figure so that if they do that trail now, the dead end, the grass, you know, the grass for a while. Well, until the county. Until the county. Is, because they, they, I mean, they're not going to have a crossing to tie into tie into anything. On the grass. Why don't you straight the trail? So I was using that as ammunition. I wonder if I just put this thing here and walk down here and do it. So um, this is what they're probably doing. This is what they're doing. And once they get the, the signalized connection together, it's going to be. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just one last question. Integrity Avenue, where are we with that? Other question, yeah. Um, we have all the paperwork we need for the final. Yeah. Um, I lost some of this. We're going to start that project a little bit in August. Okay. All the way to the point where we want to try and grow grass. Yeah. And for obvious said, reasons, yeah. right? Yeah. And so why don't we disturb that and get it all regraded and then it's exposed all summer, takes in the sun, probably the best time to. To plant seed or plant the food. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they are heat up and ready to go. Uh, they said come the second week of August, the talk okay. and uh, that's really the time we get the tradition on the shape of this and not get the tight in and then be planting and then grow the seed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thanks, 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 Tim. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Tim. All right, I'm going to pull the audience real quick. Good afternoon, Matt's here for Next Play. Ron, you're here for the uh, show and so work with me. And any other specific items we want to get to? Any kind of problems with you? Thank you, Ron. Sure. Any others? Good. So, he runs the you know, long list. Um, yeah, I think so. Good for those presentations. Can you uh, welcome can me to the Wi Fi? Yeah, we can yeah. get you set up. Yeah, why don't you guys set up and I'll do these, these will both be quicker and then we'll have them in the same time. So, um, Matt, you want to hit next play basketball? Good evening. Um, state your name. Then I start. Uh, uh, Matthew Paul, I live at 1102 Hunters Lane in Orland, PA. Uh, previously, I lived in Erdenheim, 204 Heatherwood Road. So I've been in the township since 2013. I've been working with the uh, Department of Recreation here in Springfield Township since about 2010 uh, with running uh, youth programs, supporting their uh, in house basketball uh, travel. Um, tryouts. Uh, so I've been working with the Department of Rec since then. Uh, I'm here tonight on behalf of Next Play Basketball, which uh, is an extension of what uh, I started in 2004. Uh, Next Play Basketball is a 12-month uh, basketball program that uh, one of my former campers, Ryan Ansel, and I uh, started uh, in 2021, coming out of COVID, um, with the idea that um, Kids needed, you know, programming uh, after being uh, cooped up for the 18 months or so, and we were wowed by um, interest. So we started with uh, uh, 
we started with 10 teams uh, to play in spring tournaments. Uh, a lot of those were township kids. I don't know the exact number. Um, fast forward to 2024, we have as many as 30 teams or 300 kids participating uh, per season uh, in the this past spring, which is the busiest time for us. Um, and in the fall, we have uh, about 450 kids trying out to be part of our sort of more competitive program. Um, the reason why I'm here tonight is because our summer league, which started in 2021, it started with 150 kids. Um, I have the numbers as far as the percentages, but the we just kicked it off not knowing. You know, we were experimenting in a lot of ways. Of, of, could we run a league? Um, it was successful. We ran it the next year. We increased the uh, total number by about uh, 60 kids in 2022. We got it up to 289 in 2023. Uh, we thought that we would continue at that rate, and our, our numbers are now closer to 200 for this uh, for this summer. Um, the league is has always started on the Tuesday after 4th of July. Uh, it's this window of time where people are, you know, done with baseball, which has been a, uh, there's a lot of kids, you know, in Springfield Township that are continuing on in these uh, state tournaments. So there's been, you know, people haven't signed up, not knowing if they could participate. So there's been a little bit of competition, if you will, for uh, nights of play. Uh, the way we run things is a, um, it's a competitive, but it's a, you know, freestyle. Uh, we have all of our coaches um, refereeing the game. So the parent and uh, parent involvement, they're just in the stands eating uh, Orland pizza or, um, you know, Joey's ice cream. We keep them out of the, the fold and make it more just about the kids playing four on four basketball. So we change the format uh, we keep score, but not really. Um, there's no standings. Uh, it's for, you know, the average kid. Um, and a lot of our next play kids play in the program. Uh, this year we have, um, again, around two, 200 kids total playing, and we have 70 or so uh, township kids. Um, in working with Emily, who has been very supportive in trying to reach the 75% requirement, um, I let her and also the the um, the group um, that's called the Department of Rec Advisory Board, uh, Partner Rec Committee, uh, to let them know that we uh, this past month started a, um, a foundation called the Power Forward Foundation, which uh, will offer scholarships to things like um, you know our summer league and other programs, but also it's for any camp or program where kids can't um, otherwise afford, uh, and we're focus primarily on uh, children's mental health, uh, parent-child uh, relationship as it relates to sports, but also uh, training uh, coaches. So um, I've been doing this work for you know close to 30 years um, as far as being in this space. And um, we tried our best to, we went door to door to get kids in the township that we thought might you know be interested, but not, not, may not be able to afford it. So we offered them um, an opportunity to apply for scholarship. And we have, uh, I believe, r roughly five kids that will be participating this uh, this summer. Um, and I'm here on behalf of uh, Next Play asking for a variance um, to the 75% requirement. It's boys and girls. The uh, group aging is from uh, third through ninth grade, which is very challenging to put together with 80 kids. If you can imagine, there's a lot of, um, you know, you can't have kids third grade playing against fifth graders, boys and girls. So we have our own levels. There's about four teams per division. So they do see each other quite often. If they're on vacation one week, they can fill in for another team. Um, so it's, it's free flowing. Uh, some parents that are hyper competitive, you know, don't understand why we're doing this. And it's sort of old school. Um, if you're not familiar with the Orland Summer League, it had been a wildly successful uh, youth, high school, college, and also men's league uh, that had played on three courts. And there was a, it was a big deal uh, for, for Springfield Township. I never saw it, but I, people you know, came to me and said, you should try to bring this back. It would be a great idea. So uh, they were right in terms of the interest, and we had kids from you know, Bucks County to, to Ridley, 
people traveled 45 minutes to play, you know, in an hour and 15 minute practice and game schedule that the games didn't matter. So a bit, a bit old school. So, so the way I understand it, the, the 75% rule has been to the policy last year. It's always kind of been 75%. I, I talked to Emily, I was curious what the origination of 75% was, because apparently it's like how the school district operates. So the question before us is, creating an exception to 75%, and it sounds like the flux of record by their okay. You know, you were there. Yeah, I think uh, reflecting on it, I think the idea was they were amenable generally, but that they didn't feel they had the authority, of course, to to just waive that. Uh, amenable to it reflected a lot upon the previous basketball uh, experience from a previous league. Uh, no complaints, as far as I know, about what's been going on the past couple of years. Sounds generally positive. I think some positives to note include just bringing uh, business over to you know, Orville Village, basically. And uh, yeah, I think the only concerns, and they're fair ones, is fairness, of course, uh, of the purpose of the 75%. Um, and how do we uh, just kind of treat those exceptions? Why those exceptions? Is there a concern uh, where there's a for-profit versus a non-profit organization that requests to use it? Of course, being our One of the um, one of our hopes is that uh, we can improve the courts. Uh, uh, that we that can, we can support, support sort of the future, future of, of this space. space. Um, you know, uh, we met we with met uh, Napoleon, Napoleon uh, Rep Representative Napoleon, Napoleon Nelson, Nelson, Nelson to see to about see how about we can how bring a third court back. back. And if we can, we can even invest our, our own money, money, time, and space. I mean, I live around the corner from it, from the space, and I grew up walking to basketball courts. And in large part, it made me into you know, somebody yeah, who had somebody to sit and wait, sit and wait to, to get on the get court. On the court. And if you and lost, you lost, sat and waited sat until, and until it, was it was your turn. Um, and it was really, and good, it was for really good for my neighborhood. neighborhood. It was a positive thing, thing. last year. Last year um, uh, and it's also and happened also this, happened year. this year. year. The kids, the kids at the kids older, older ages, ages um, uh, were on the courts. And I know these kids because I coached them in youth sports. And they asked to sign up like that night. Uh, or, that uh, or that week. And so and we so made it we possible, made it possible so, that, so that one, we'd have, one, more, we'd have competition more competition for the other kids, but we made it into a positive where they would actually wear a penny. A penny uh, they were talking about ninth grade, grade boys, boys that, that, you know, I see at these courts these during the daytime, daytime and weekends. And, and um, uh, we'd like to make the spaces better. We'd like to make it a you know long-term thing for the community. And, you know, this is where my, my kids will be hanging out. <laughs> over the next, the next three to five, five years. years. 
And with the new um, To them, to them uh, my kids uh, play, uh, play for Springfield uh, travel, travel, uh, travel uh, but there's more uh, there's that more we can, that do, can do together, together to you know benefit, you know, benefit the community if they're not going to run their own, their own you know league, league. Um, um, and, and years, years ago, ago uh, because, uh, because I've been in this space, space there were no there girls were basketball, basketball teams, teams uh, that, played that played in Springfield Township, Springfield Township. just like there was no Springfield Little League softball going back to 2010 so just a little while ago and now, and now um, um, girls are playing, girls are playing my daughter's in Erie, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania playing, playing in a state in a tournament. State tournament. I said, how are you going to states? And she was so excited. But rather did want to play us. <laughs> so they're in the state tournament for the first time in the history of Springfield Township. But what they've done, um, Joe Cobb and others have done to generate uh, enthusiasm for girls. To give them their own lane. Their own so lane. I think that's really that's important, really important that there's a girls league um, as well. As well. As well. you're one of the things that we're not offering them the acceptance all the time and friends play at least with it behind i just think uh from my view, as in the parks and rec, in my view, it's about there. She's not going to do that. That's not that I have a problem with her. Uh, just to think about the process a little bit. I think this is what the teacher also did. Just be sure that we're getting there. And one thing to note, for example, is that we're running right into the program here. I think maybe next year, uh, maybe it's fine this year. And maybe next year, get a little leeway so that we can have a facing somewhat an emergency of our own making for the city, right? Uh, Maybe that's fine uh, for this iteration as we sort out what the percentage should be slash potential exception qualifiers could be. Well, having having the policy is the filter of sort. So I just can't say, hey, we're gonna burn. You know, there is an exception process to look at the details. So the only one that I think the question was. How often do you accept these exceptions? 
not so much about this particular program, it's more for the future uh, folks if that point of view sounds like there could be opportunity for, for that and concerns about this. Sure. Sure. Cool. And I think you just need to be prepared to defend the the decision when the parent whose child wants to go to the courts and just shoot hoops, you know, on his own or with another buddy and not be involved in the league, and it's not available, right? Because it's taken up to and for a for profit endeavor. You know, just be prepared, prepared for that. Yeah, two things I was going to say are, are um, and this nothing at all to do with quite a league or, or um, but. I will often hear a couple times in the summer about trash on the sports and like you know the courts are sort of looking a little bit just from the activity people are using them so much. Um and with that also probably once a year, some sort of fight breaking out with police have to get involved. Oftentimes, again, because of the popularity, a group of you know, maybe strength of kids, upper double kids, just you know, getting too competitive. Um and so, yeah, because of that, the spotlight always seems to be on those courts. Um, but I echo your sentiment as far as, um, you know, having witnessed the reputation of the community, so you do put the kids first, and I think that's awesome. Um, and um, the kids have kind of graduated out of the program where we are much better for it. Um, but my point, having to defend that, because again, in any sport, we just have such limited facilities in town gen, and so it always comes up. Um, how is this group get to use this when, you know? Um, and so, uh, but, I, but I think because there is a policy that, you know, every team gets, gets the young team, it's not like, you know, we're only gonna top kids um, and it makes it more for more competitive experience. Um, and there is that sort of need that community component. I think that uh, it can be defended. Um, but I do, I just do get concerned about because it's just a limited number of courts and how popular it gets. You get kids there from Bucks County, from Ridley, they're not from right here. They're not going to care necessarily about leaving some stuff behind. Um, so I just you know want the focus to again be on that piece too. And I'll just say that uh, it's a big part of what we do as an organization um, is you know we try to make sure that these kids know that these are this is their opportunity, this is their privilege to play. Uh, we haven't had any fights. It's been competitive with the uh, the ninth grade group, and uh, we sort of stopped there intentionally because uh, these kids, you know, the parents don't come to those games. You know, they're on their own. They, they walk or drive themselves in tenth grade, what have you. Uh, and it, it's difficult to manage at eight thirty at night. Uh, but you know, we've managed it, and you know, I think we've strengthened relationships. You know, as I see these kids. You know, I'm with them, you know, a couple times a week, and they're asking me for, can my friend play this week? You know, we have extra jerseys. And if there's a kid, you know, who's visiting, you know, we'll give them a jersey and put them in the game. That's the kind of league that we're we're running, and we're in it for a bigger reason than just, you know, making a profit here. We're doing this 12 months a year. We now have the foundation that we started. Uh, we're trying to serve more kids. We want to bring people to Springfield Township and um, support the businesses, as Susie said earlier. Um, and again, I have a bigger vision of this being a bigger lead uh, and maybe bringing it back to where it was, where, you know, Jim can, can show his uh, basketball prowess again. Should uh, <laughs> 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 well, uh, be too, that he might worry. I know it's really good for this. I go back all the time, you know, during the summer. The last couple of summers, when pizza and jelly in the owner market, you know, we see no reason to back there. So we'll get to that. So, Frank, I think um, the concerns they have have, have good merit, right? I think it's about fairness, about uh, all those things, and the concern about for profit uh, taking up space in the bank presence, also a fair concern. However, from my view, I think mean, supporting that locality, that location, and providing an influx of individuals to express their desire to uh, recreation, to basketball, for sporting, that they will be like, plus the business element, and then you overcome some of the 
Any objections? Yes. Matt, I have one None question. Yes. Okay. Yes, my, my one question is, so um, you seem to have some kind of an open door policy get to show up. So uh, is that is that universal? So if the, if the one kid in the neighborhood who ha hasn't signed up for the program yet or, the, or wants to play that night, can he play? So, uh, yes, I mean, it, it happens a lot because there's a lot of enthusiasm. Uh, you know, people from you know, the nearby uh, apartments come out and sit and watch the games, you know, we play from 6 to 9 o'clock at night. Again, a lot of times we'll invite the kids to play. Uh, you know, we play four on four, we have eight kids per team. You know, the kids play a lot. Uh, so uh, we do invite them to play. Now, if they're not respectful or if they don't play by our standards, you know, we'll say, you know, we're not going to allow you to stop. That's for anybody. Yeah. May I just, just because we've had a lot of talk about organizations in the town, I do want to say, one concern I'm not sure I have a handle on is that front regret. How then to approach fairly all the for profit, not profit, whatever it is. I think in general, I don't know if it's not like these, but talking about sponsorships, you know, should you also have a few that's like to with other organizations? Um, it's just other, other elements that I'm not sure I have thoughts on at this juncture that I'd like to make any fair questions about. Uh, feel like we would miss something like that out, but I do feel like it is a little bit tiptoeing the rules and that I do feel like perhaps for the next year, maybe some earlier point in time, unless we have some different strategy by then uh, to give a set time to to suss it down and we can ask for whatever we ask for like clean up efforts afterward or whatever we can ask for, which I think is probably the best thing. My only response is that we, we don't know, we have an estimate as to who will sign up year to year. Some kids age out of our program. Uh, we have a really good following, but again, if the kids are playing, you know, baseball or softball into July, they may not sign up because they'll only play four or six weeks. Uh, so a lot of people wait until, you know, the last two, three weeks, we've had 100, you know, so kids sign up. Uh, so we don't always have the data, you know, six weeks in advance or two months in advance, but we can do a better job, I guess, of trying to get people signed up, you know, increasing our prices we did uh, from the Department of Rec Recommendation. We uh, gave a discount to township residents to increase uh, their participation. I don't think that really made a big difference. Uh, I just think people waiting for something like this because this, you know, free flowing, maybe we're too kind and letting people sign up so late. Uh, maybe it was recently an hour ago, somebody signed up. Uh, but that's, you know, we want to make it inclusive. Uh, I just want to make that point really clear. We do want to, you know, I, trash is really important to me too. Uh, meaning, you know, I, I want that space to be as nice as possible. Sometimes there's glass bottles that these kids throw on the courts, and I'll, you know, one, clean it up before the games, obviously, but two, you know, try to communicate to these kids that. You know, I say kids, teenagers, and it's not an easy conversation. But you talking about other kids that are just there, not, not from the weekend yeah. or you know, on the Monday, or you know, we're there Tuesday night at six o'clock and go there in advance to see. You know, there's sometimes kids get in trouble on the weekends, uh, and again, because I have kids, fourteen, maybe it's like fifteen and thirteen. Now I'm right in that mix of knowing these kids, which I think is also something that they may not like the fact that I'm going to say something to these kids and I have done it uh, with the parents in contact. So it's a little bit of how my, my dad would have uh, handled things when you knock on the door and say, I need to talk to you about your, your son. So I never want anybody to come to my door and uh, talk to my dad. Uh, so I, I'm not saying that that's, I'm not out there Township, it's a little bit of, uh, we call them. Town Watch. Town Watch. Town Watch. My dad used to call himself Town Watch, as he said, Glendale. Kevin Lowe and kids. But he knew everybody's name, and they knew him. So they were a bit fearful of him as I was. Uh, but anyway, I've been worried it for a long haul. I understand your concerns. Uh, John, as well, I, I, you know, we, we didn't know how big this would get. We didn't know that we'd be 
you know, down this year, and partly because we were concerned that whether or not we would get the permit. So we're a little bit of chicken and the egg scenario. Do we have the support versus you know, how how far do we push forward with our base that's growing? Got a couple of things to move on, but John, your concern, you know, Emily was real clear in her memo that you know that they'll get back cleaning up the park and after the game, whether it's just the courts or around it. So that's you know, whether it's your cap that you're you know making those improvements into the facility and then it provides the structure we you know things are less likely to happen. I was gonna say in some ways in some ways the yeah. structure that he provides, you know, during those times that's what you kind of yeah, be opting to have it every day if it is like the weekend. It's, it's, yeah. yeah, yeah, and then the final one while that discount of ten dollars, you know, per player for the county president may not have attracted a whole lot of support, makes it easier for this these guys to make a decision. Um, you know, like, yeah, maybe we'll leave that because we are seeing a break for the county president. So, just food for thought. Yeah. Appreciate it. So we we're gonna vote on that Wednesday. Yeah, exception. We're gonna yeah. vote on that. It's just a waiver, just like you would yeah. approve a landed on a waiver. It's kind of like waiver general consensus that they're right there. Just yeah, sure. Um, You're gonna play lawyer again. Uh, you know, hey, that's what it's like. Big bucks. <laughs> uh, on, on, and, uh, and, um, I, I was just gonna suggest. I mean, you want to consider having some kind of a, a lease. Uh, as opposed to just a permit, and I'm not saying a lease for monetary purposes, I mean, it could be one buck, that doesn't matter. But you have some expectations about what's going to take place there. The extent of the adult supervision, you know, uh, or, you know all, all kinds of things, you know, like here is the trash picked up at the end of the night, that, that, that type of thing. Because if there's nothing at all, and just here's the permit, good luck, then, you know, when the residents come in here and say, well, you know, there's a problem. What can I see? You know what agreement you have with this organization? But you know, and they're like, well, "What are you guys doing?" Well, there's part, there's policies for the parks and rec. I know, but there's a lot of policies that we're discussing tonight right, that aren't in those policies. Um, and it's, it's not, I don't think it's anything unfair or difficult or that you wouldn't agree to. But it's it's something where you can say, "All right, you know, um, you can't have a hundred kids and two adults." And uh, that's not going to work. Uh, it doesn't work for us either. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I, to your point, I, I, we would be amenable to whatever you know township requires. And uh, again, we want to be a partner in this uh, long term. This isn't a short term thing. And as I said, we've been doing this for uh, thirty years, uh, continue to. Uh, but we want to you know keep our foothold here. This is where we started. Uh, the, the next play brand and it's been since 2010. Right. And the only thing that does concern me is uh, you've not seen the memo that your plan to start next week. Well, the plan oh. is to start tomorrow night. <laughs> <laughs> Even <laughs> better than last week. Uh, again, I, I've been working with Emily for the last few months. Um, you know, as a fall of mine, I, I if we applied for the permit, you know, I think. 30 days in advance, there's a standard that she has that you know, the year before we, we asked for permission and then applied for the permit, you know, four weeks in advance. Uh, was, we've asked for the permit uh, in advance of tonight. And again, I was here in May uh, describing sort of where we were with, with you know, township. So, uh, you know, I try my best to follow. This. It was the first time I've come before the board to ask for a variance in four years. Now, I, I didn't know that there was a, well, I would get this far in my life to, to get in front of the board of commissioners. Uh, but, uh, but I, you know, I, I'm trying to do what, what's best. If we have to go you know, play at LaSalle or Ryan is the coach uh, or St. Philip Mary and White Marsh, we're, we're going to do what we need to do because the league can't be pushed back because what happens in the second week of August is that you know the teams get all mixed up anyway because a lot of vacation time happens you know, right around town. So that's been our experience. It's a lot of fun. We give out a lot of ice cream cones and you know we've done pizza night where we bring out 10 to 15 pizzas and we pay for them and we make it more of a fun thing and people look at us like we're crazy, but we kind of want to just make it a fun experience and uh, 
uh, to push it back is really not an option for us. So we've got to find another right back And I'm not I'm not suggesting that, but does Emily have anything like from you in writing about what you do and how it works? We have a, a permit request for tomorrow night, we have a permit request for Thursday night after the vote, and we have a permit request for last or for tonight. So we have sort of all of our ducks uh, in a row, and she's been great about saying, you know, well, these are the scenarios if you give the go ahead. Okay. By the way, that was the purpose of my arrival. She's getting a little sooner to the range. They're trying to start tomorrow. And And maybe for this year, I mean, the permit does have certain obligations on the permit to see that it's going to address the litter and just kind of things. Jim brings up a good point about, you know, the um, coach to player ratio that maybe we revisit and bring it up about this police or something of, maybe it's not called police for next year. Uh, you, know, you are uh, slightly different than, say, the Springfield Soccer Club, which is a not profit, and your reach can go beyond you know, the township borders rather significantly. Uh, maybe that has a different obligation um, you know, uh, associated with it than the typical permit for uh, leading to agreement at the meeting. So, something we think about next. You know, have a little bit Great. Thank you good for tomorrow. Uh, no objection. No, no objection. Can you still sign? Yes. <laughs> yes. I want to the whole division, John, this year, but uh, that's fine. The you know, public that are on Zoom and what have you, you know, uh, again, people text us, you know, an hour before. Uh, and you know, we have room, and because of the way we do things, uh, this year we have more room than we had last year. Uh, last year we were going to cap it at 300. Now we have a bunch of spots. It's difficult to schedule. The people that handle the schedule say to me, we don't have room, but I just know that you know, if you miss this week, we we'll always have a room for people to fill in. Uh, if they want to do the whole six weeks, we can make sure they find at least one or two teams to play on. It's just about having fun. Thank you, and I just want to say, I, having, I'm sorry to keep everybody here, I don't know if we know each other, but my, my, uh, my learning in all of this, you know, I, I said this one, never in front of a microphone or one recorded message here, but I, I have no idea what happens here in this room uh, until uh, I came to one meeting about six months ago. So the, the amount of time and effort and thoughtfulness, I think is the biggest thing is incredibly impressive uh, and so I just want to say appreciate, you know, you caring so much about the township. Um, I have a little sense of what you get as a stipend, uh, which is incredible for the amount of time and, again, energy that you uh, care. So I, as a resident, I appreciate it. And uh, for all the you know, negatives, you, know, you probably don't hear it enough, that I'm appreciative that you care so much. So thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Um, all right, Robin, one more. That one will definitely be shorter. Yeah, someone else, right? Yeah, uh, go ahead. Yeah, we'll do that one. That's, and then that's your show. All right, so why don't we do the right, right. hand card? Basically, the short version, like I'm sure you've had to make uh, They're making it to another set of bus. Yeah. 
and uh, we're probably going to say okay with this. Uh, yeah. PEP is firm. We have to have four consecutive rounds of quarter of sampling that shows stable or decreasing levels of that benzene that we've only ever detected in monitoring well number six. It has never left that area, and we believe, both from our fingers, we're going to see those positive results, at which case, once we have those results, we're going to submit our final report to DEP for both the groundwater and the soil. If those re results come back for whatever reason to show rising benzene levels, we certainly hope that doesn't is the case, or that it's migrated um, in what we believe to be the westerly direction or off-site towards the Vecchione property, uh, hasn't ever been detected in any of the downstream wells. Um, we're considering separating the soil from the groundwater and going forward with our soil closure report and then tackling the groundwater separately. Um, something we talked about, I guess um, Pete and Jim may have been on that call at one time with the soil scientists. Um, we talked about doing that anyway, but that's going to cost more money and we're going to have to deal with the water somewhere along the line anyway. So the recommendation was to go forward with the groundwater sampling now because we're at that quarterly stage um, and, and go from there. So assuming we're going to vote on that Wednesday, we prove that it's fifteen hundred bucks. So so we're going to do that. What's the timeline to get those results? Uh, if you give me the sense that you guys are okay with it, I'll call them tomorrow morning and they'll start scheduling that probably within the next week or so. And how long for the sample and back? Yeah. Honestly, another 15 to 30 days. Parts of it come back sooner than others. I think they go to different labs. So anyone object? I'll have the results, results before next month. And they would have used the last one. This would be the last round of quarterly groundwater sampling that we would have to take, assuming that we had stable or decreasing levels of benzene and no migration. If either of those other two happen, well, then we have to separate the two issues. And then you're looking at potentially a claim on your insurance to do some of the targeted breaking up the benzene. The 100 grand adjustment. Correct. Potentially a barrier for the migration. Assuming no one has an objection to relighting the city of That's the Coming as far. The, good, the great news is the benzene was way low in the last round. You know, we went to 107, 106, and then we went down to 29. So we're hopeful we're, we just need to be below 107, and we're good. And no migration. Okay. Do you have any specific questions, or you got to come up to? part of our national recording. Robert Mary Berg of Oregon Ladies. I have a question. So is this the last round period of testing providing that this current test that's going to take place comes back positive? Oh, I'm sorry, like with less density, not being more stable or decreased. Yeah, that is decreasing or stable. Okay. So no, if that is obtained, those results, will there be any future tests? There will be most likely, from my understanding, additional sampling required down the road. What's down the road? Once the EP approved or closed or before the health. So that could be once every five years. Correct. Depending on and the DEP will dictate the DEP reviews our Act 2 closure report. And they will tell us what they accept, what they don't accept, what they accept with conditions, and what those conditions say. And does that mean, like, after the, the site's been uh, developed in the future, we'll still have to continue tests? Potentially. If that's what they would okay. If that's part of their. And that's part of their part of the, the conditions. final word on our closure report. 
They haven't took their hand off in terms of the pattern you can see my baby. It's been a big night for me, too. Yeah. <laughs> that's the purpose of the monitoring wells being installed at those locations. So the monitoring wells were installed by EPA, and then additional monitoring wells were installed by the township as part of the active closure process. So wow. EPA was doing some sampling post remediation. We put in additional monitoring wells as required by DPP under our, our char characterization uh, of the site. And then we submitted that information to them to try and get guidance on what our closure report would include. And we now have a closure report, um, I guess, uh, it's an outline of what we said we would do uh, going forward. And uh, we had to put in additional monitoring well characterizing the site. Some of those will have to be monitored in the future, I'm sure. Others will not. Okay. Like right now, we're only testing monitoring well number six, number nine, and number 11, right? Six is where the benzene has been detected, and it's the only well where it's been detected. Nine and 11 are in the, the down gradient path of where we would expect any groundwater to migrate to. So that's why we're sampling those. We did monitoring well number one, which is the closest to your home, at the request of some of the residents who was a concern. And what about benzene or else? And so we did that back in March, I think, of last year. Yeah. And there was no defect. Right. Right. Which we, we didn't think we would get a defect, but we said, well, no. And we didn't. But since then, monitoring well one through five, and then Seven, eight, and um, I think there's 14 of them in total. The other one's not the same. We're only doing six, nine, and 11. Okay. And, and whatever the um, ground, the soil samples, where is that being taken from? So that was only done one time back in March, I believe, as well. And that was done from the pot that was brought on site. There was some thought in DP's mind that whatever soil we brought on site could be the cause of the benzene that was detected in monitoring well number six. So in order to rule that out, we tested the soils in a couple of areas in the vicinity of MW6 to rule that out. They all came back clean, which we fully expected. Okay. So, so the benzene wasn't located in the soil samples? No, so not at all. Okay. Only in groundwater at you know, like 50 feet below grade uh, in MW6. Okay. And as I said, it went from 107 in March of 2023 all the way down to 29 um, when we sampled it three months ago. Okay. And, and I would just a request of the township uh, because although that the DEP is going to set out specific follow up. Uh, requirements for future testing if they say that no future testing is needed will the township still conduct periodic testing at some you know various stages because to ensure the health and welfare of the community and of the property That's a decision that the board would have to make at some point, but I think we should probably let EP weigh in on that and tell us what, if anything, we need to do. I suspect they're going to tell us we're going to need to do something in the future. I think it would lean on our part of our environmental too. Yeah. I don't think anyone here can talk to the next term on these matters, so we don't want to do something just a feel good, you know, thing, just to feel good. If there's scientific merit, we should do that. And we'll answer that recommendation. Okay, well, I'm asking them just to for, you know, consider that. Sure, sure. You know, you should depend on mm -hmm. you know, what happens. Yep. Just because the monitoring wells were installed and the township did feel. Um, I'm going to treat this as if I live on the farm. I'm sorry? I'm going to treat this as if I live on the farm. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone. Anything else on the uh, the tech site? Good there.
right? Good luck to monitoring well six, nine, eleven. <laughs> Should have been better. All right, Ryan, you're up. So I right. was talking about the feasibility of a solar panel project. We'll be talking about the wild run and the instrumental helping. And uh, next year, you can provide notes. Questions? Your questions are ready. <laughs> Well, I will say it's pleasantly surprised to see nine years. Mm -hmm. I was worried it was. <laughs> Lights out, not one, juju piece, space of gin events. Craig, do Zoom people see a screen? They do? Yes. They see this? Like this yes. What else there? It's the, what, what's not up, just from the video, right? It's actually... What's up there is what they see. So they, they'll see the window and, and what's on the... Uh, sure. Yeah. Yep. 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 You didn't have anything specific, right? Yeah, for the night. There are, I mean, where else? Where else would you want to be? I'm great. That's great. It's not like a magic. It's a great. So, um, this started probably about, um, yeah, almost two years ago, I think, really. I think just to look at, uh, having solar, you know, on top of buildings, at least the administration building, the city building, and the power uh, public works building. And I kind of did a quick um, assessment of that. Um, I should say that. Uh, so Ron Thompson kind of here about uh, Belt Avenue service up in, um, in my uh, uh, Windmore location for almost 40 years. And I've been in the, uh, in the energy uh, field for uh, 40, more than that. Um, the, oh, yeah, the only 40 years. Uh, with a lot of focus on solar, and the past 30 years have been pretty focused on photovoltaics. And I've been a solar provider, um, solar in that field for a long time, doing a lot of work in Pennsylvania, but also abroad in Africa and other places. So, anyway, so this is kind of my thing, I do a lot of the more technical aspect of this uh, work. So, um, about two years ago, like I said, we, we did some uh, quick, uh, did some quick assessment, and I think that was asked about maybe getting a little more focused on what we do again and a little bit more detail on that. And, um, you know, uh, I just want to put the number. Is it the center? Yeah. I just want to say that what's really became the new app since two years is what mm -hmm. the invoke the best app. Um, yeah. uh, and uh, uh, apparently, there's some day, some times during the day when traffic's so backed up, it's backed up in Bellingham Bridge. So the cars are stacked up on bridge. I guess the concern was because they put a weight limit on that bridge with the bars. We have four cars idling on the bridge that. Wow. And it would only come in unless they close that freaking bridge again, which is why it is a sprinkler issue because they don't want them to close the bridge again because of that. that. So, is that locked? So, where is it backed up? Trying to get onto the pipe? Trying to get back up? Trying to get on the pipe because it's below the pipe. Yeah, the backs all the way up to the bridge. Because the lights on the pipe. Right. 
I don't even know that that like is there to have that. The delay is because there's a, a backup at the Blacktown Shopping Center, like that's going back. It doesn't allow traffic to clear Valley Green. I can see where the interconnection of but part of the shopping center is up. But I'm not even sure that it goes all the way down to Valley Green. I assumed it was the length of the disaster. I assumed it was the length. Yeah, maybe the Valley Green length. Staring speeches, maybe it's there. Yeah. On Bethlehem or on, on Valley Green? Valley Green. Valley Green 31. I mean, it's only one lane. I mean, yeah. you had a right and a left might be better, but you know, if the guy fell on the floor to go left, doesn't go right away. And then there's, there's, there's no, there's no up posting three. There should be three. Well, it must be. But you're saying that it might be jammed up because they can't go right. They can't go right because the light down shopping center. If there's no capacity on Bethlehem Pike for the turning car, that Maybe an issue with the, the interconnection, but if it's just a matter of the light doesn't give enough green time to, you're right. Well, about green, I know they're trying to give priority to Bethlehem to the Bethlehem move. It's the idea of Valley Green. I'll let them know that. Yeah, yeah. yeah take care of it. Take care of our solicitor. All right, Gary and the Valley Green in here. Mm -hmm. Um, our highway resurfacing and patching program is basically completed. Um, the um, resurfacing project uh, for the Township Streets is going to be done by Glasgow. They're going to be in here in early to be to August, which is good. We're going to get it done for the start of school. Skyline Drive Detention Basin, Tim talked about that. I also talked about the MS Bowl permits. Mm -hmm. Holy Martyrs Church, briefly, you'll see in your zoning hearing board agenda that they have applied for a variance to locate a temporary school um, trailer. Um, what their plan is, is uh, they would like to put the under two years of age um, students, I'll call them, in the trailer while they work through the details of converting the convent or sprinklering the main building, so they say. Um, would be in the parking lot? Would be in the parking lot. They've actually proposed two different locations, one of which was against the main school building on the Ulmer Avenue side. And we said that's a terrible idea. It's the only residential, real residential, single family residential uses that you're going to impact. You're going to be right across from. Um, they've kind of moved over to the rectory parking lot where they would be you know, basically next to that grassy area where they're working playground. Uh, yeah. the bottom line is it's all about dollars um, in order to put these younger kids in the main school building which was their original plan they need to spread the word building um, so they that if, went, they use the if they well if they use any of it no, no, the, the older kids are okay on the upper floor, um, but anybody two and under, because they generally aren't mobile enough on their own in an evacuation, um, either need to have sprinklers or it needs to have direct access to the exterior with a door in every classroom. So their plan was to relocate to the convent and make those modifications for that purpose. Then they got bids back on what that would cost, and now they're looking at a trailer. So this all comes down to dollars. Um, they also are going to need, uh, and they're going to pursue a waiver to the land development review process to locate the trail over there. So um, again, zoning hearing board application coming up. Yeah. You might want to take a talk about whether you're going to take a position on that or so not. We, well, I would, I don't know if it was like months ago. We did that. We understood. And Jim, it was not coordinated. And one of the positives was that, that they had a nice parking area for that. There would be the probably drop off and pick on without affecting the trailer. They put the trailer down there that cuts down on that space. That's that was a concern. Yeah. Uh, they're gonna have to make all the this presentation at the zone hearing board. That's gonna get drained. It's gonna have to be a very careful decision. But that's it's true. Did they talk did they consider just in their bigger parking lot? On the opposite side of the lower? They, they, that was never one of the proposals. Is that still an active church? Mm -hmm. It is. 
also my memory was, was there some issue with them choosing to merge or not merge properties, something, something like that? Yeah, yeah. What, where the comment was, and certainly probably the other thing, the question was. But they have that being. They claim, they claim that there's a deed that shows all the properties that have been merged together, but they've yet to produce the deed. So as far as we know, they're separate parcels. And I remember I think with Pete yeah. being concerned about potentially making some sort of development that affects property lines. Right, and because the parking was on this parcel, it didn't need this parking. Right, this is the parcel. Yeah. Where there's a school. And that's part of what zoning hearing has to essentially review. Not for this because it would just be on. Well, they're going to look at all of that, I think, because there's the use. You know, they're going to look at this temporary classroom trailer there. We don't generally permit. Um, and we, if we do permit them, we, we have always done it for a specified period of time to kind of get them through something, right? So the school district had them at Anfield Elementary for a period of time when we had a flip coming through the school. Uh, or when they were in, in, they were in, in between putting on an addition, I think it was the library addition in the gymnasium that they did. Um, Carson Valley has it for a period of time. Same yeah. chances. Same chance has one mm -hmm. right now that's got a two year lifespan. So, you know, they're not to be used in lieu of a regular building. And, and maybe one of the questions is well, what's the end game here? What's the end plan? It's too expensive now to do the renovations to the convent. Is it going to get cheaper in two years? Right, so if we do the zoning board, we go to the facility. That's what we said. And then the it takes a long time to plan for the renovation. You could ask Jim to go to the board or whoever and just ask a lot of questions and establish a record. Um, so a lot of things are like the application. I yeah, I'm starting to think they might be thinking of that as a semi permanent. So, what's the status then? When do they have a date? Yeah, they're going to go to the hearing board. The hearing board on uh, July 22nd. So, if we do anything, we're going to have this, this month. month. This month, yes. Mm -hmm. I just kind of tain it up here. You can talk about it mm -hmm. the at the end. Um, Springfield Middle School, but they're, they're going to be looking for a uh, waiver to the land development review process in order to do some field improvements. Mm -hmm. We asked the question, why didn't you just include it in the bigger plan that you just got approval for? And I said, well, it wasn't in the budget when we were putting the plans together and we sort of want to do it now at the end of, you know, before the uh, end of this year so that it's ready for the spring and we get, go see the planning commission. Uh -huh. So. Um, talk a little bit about the workers' compensation educational conference that Craig and I attended. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that was really good. Um, the keynote speaker was really sad. He was a very inspirational guy. Uh, he was a, an employee of a power company and uh, he told the story of uh, took a shortcut one day, did something that he did for 20 years while he was on the job, and ended up losing both of his arms. Mm -hmm. uh, he, doing a, a service, a new service install for a residential property, and he didn't use the proper um, bolt cutters, like uh, he didn't buy the last one so that they're not conducive. He had PPE that, you know, was insulated gloves. Um, he used a pair of metal bolt cutters and a pair of leather gloves, and uh, he snipped the first, um, I guess, wire, and then the second wire, and then we went for the neutral, because it was in such a narrow place, it was like this angle, and he touched the, the acid one. And he's just, mm. but you know what? He was very inspirational. I mean, he, he didn't blame anybody for himself. Took the thing, you know, and he blamed himself. Yeah. He got up and he goes out and he talks to people about the importance of, you know, pay attention to the safety mm. mm. gross holes and don't cut corners. Mm. And then they talked to us about our, our rates and everything, and I thought it was pretty pretty cool that, um, you know, we're paying less in. Uh, workers' comp insurance today that we were 10 years ago. That's amazing. Yep. And we've received, you know, um, about $700,835 in dividends and multi-trust discounts and re-stabilization credits and state safety grants um, during that same time period. So, yeah, is this is this that particular policy part of our consortium? Yes. 
as part and of the trust. Because we trust that had such a good record. Will that contain that we still so combination, Jim? Uh, yeah. Um, so there's a, a risk management department that comes out and they evaluate and they give us safety tips. Um, they give us safety grants that we can use to buy equipment that, you know, in theory is supposed to reduce the likelihood of, of workers' compensation injuries. Um, they return a portion of whatever the claims that are unused back to all of its members in the form of a dividend. They put a, they set aside a portion of it to put against the multi-trust discount. So we get more because we're in all three trusts than mm -hmm. somebody that's only in one or two of them. Um, and then we have the reorganization credits that you can use, you can bank, you can use them all in one year, you can use the portion every year. Mm -hmm. So, great. Yeah, it's a good program. Uh, great Estates of the Gilded Age. So the historical society has put together a series of display boards um, that they would like to us to put up in the library, uh, mount them against the walls. Uh, there, your agenda book had, uh, I guess, the slip sheet of what they are. Uh, I'd like to meet with them and talk with them about what our, our obligations are or not, um, as far as hanging them and then afterwards, you know, if there's anything we need to do. Um, and if you're not opposed to it, we would give them the okay to do it. Um, they look pretty cool. Yeah. Well, the old township building had pictures and yeah, the they walls. Were, they were the, um, the Stokesbury. Stokesbury stuff, yeah. And that was actually from the developer who did the townhouses, actually had them made up for the sales trailer. Okay. And then when he was done, he said, I'm going to throw these out. You know, it's my phone. And thought it was pretty neat for the old <laughs> building. So they're kind of tattered and a little ratty right now, but it's like what well, these tours are owned by them. Uh, there, there are going to be, that's one of the questions that I need to raise with that. So if you recall, we have the, the, the urns out on the front lawn right. that were gifted to them by the Philadelphia Museum of Art. Um, and we've been hosting them, I guess, for the last six or seven years. Covering them and covering them. Yeah. And then they came to us with an agreement that like a year or so ago and said, hey, we want you to sign this agreement. I'm like, well, we'll show this to Jim. And, Jim had read all over it and we sent it back to them and they said, okay, we forgot about yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. So I don't want this to turn into the same situation. I mean, it sounds like a neat idea, but if you want to just give it to us to hang on the wall, that's fine. We'll do it. But just send me that other thing that I marked up. Oh, yeah. read everywhere. <laughs> I might need to do it again. Yeah. Uh, Rec Center Master Plan, we have a kickoff meeting on uh, Thursday. With the architects, they're under contract. They're interested to get going. They're also going to do uh, a walkthrough of the old buildings and start to pick apart, you know, any other problems there. Um, what would need to be corrected? Um, is, is that open for us to join? What? Yeah. And, yeah. Why Thursday? Why Thursday morning? That was their preference. Uh, Walnut Avenue Master Plan. So the uh, steering committee met on uh, the evening of July 3rd, um, just before Independence Day. And uh, they succeeded from the week. Now they, um, the, they came up with the dates for a master plan um, RFP. So uh, we're going to get that out on the street and uh, hopefully identify that. We'll get some grant funding uh, from Greg's girlfriend out at uh, DCNR. And, uh, so we have to follow all their rules. Um, National Night Out just wanted to put out there. It's going to be August 6th from 6 to 9 p.m. It's going to be here. Um, as recently as today, we recruited another participant in SEPTA. Mm -hmm. so that's be part of that. Mm -hmm. But they have a safety bus that they'll have now. Mm -hmm. and they may even have their transit, some of their transit police there. So usually it's a pretty mm -hmm. nice night. Um, Nancy Ashton, she, yeah, everybody knows Nancy, especially sure. if you have a child in our recreation programs. Um, Nancy is going to retire um, at the end of August. Um, her husband, Bob, has been retired for the last three years, and Nancy's continued to work. She was actually going to um, retire earlier this year, um, but because uh, I'm away without on maternity, she decided to stay out um, until she has vacation later this year. So um, um, we're going to we're going to miss her. She's she's great. Emily and I talked briefly this afternoon about um, you know how to backfill that position. She's got some ideas um, that you know flesh out a little bit further. 
Um, but she's kind of pushing for a full time position. Um, you know, if you're familiar with our department, you can probably recognize it's pretty light. Um, right now, you have 1.5 people basically in the department. Yeah. And, um, you know, whatever that next position is, um, maybe coming to you with a proposal for you know, a full time position. Uh, and, and we're kind of looking forward towards the rec center, whatever that looks like in the future is going to be somebody to be involved with that facility as well. And, and this person may fit that bill. Um, this person may tag team with Emily um, you know, to uh, oversee that facility. I remember she, just, just because of Emily's legacy, and I recall her feeling um, the desire for a full time position. And, and at some point, we talked about maybe somebody sharing a full time position with other person. And I was going to left with that. Something just something for you to discuss, I guess, with her, whatever her thoughts are. It gets a little complicated unless it's a, a, like a supervisory type position because you, you've got a bargaining unit over there for the hour employees. Uh, so it's really not like a maintenance line person. Oh, sorry. But it, it could be, take the form of, you know, a parks superintendent if, you know, that's something that she's interested in. Maybe that, I don't know what that exactly looks like yet, but, you know, she would theoretically, you know, delegate any of the parks responsibilities to this individual and take more of the programming and um, you know, the, the oversight of the department um, so that this other individual would do more of the parks inspections and those types of things. So just, uh, just a reminder that it's been discussed before, I think just stalling from, like you said, it wasn't really necessary. And I think last year it seems like uh, sharing some resources from public works has really alleviated some of that as well. Yeah, we've, we've made it a point to dedicate more of the public works staff to the park facility. I mean, we found it, you know, found a way. Definitely made it a point. Um, and then uh, I put a little, like, I don't know if it's a conclusion or not, but just an update to, um, you had a lot of public comment last month about the Little League Springfield Little League Baseball organization and um, referenced the news article that, that came out on uh, earlier, I guess, this month about some of the changes that they made in their board. Seemingly pointing to one individual who's responsible for airplane banner mm -hmm. um, and then some of the other changes that they were going to be making. Unnamed, unnamed board member. So that's it. So, yeah, any questions or rules? I had a question on page two. Uh, Armor and Sons of Wick Cripple. Yep. 22,589. What was that? So, that was a warning signal on Germantown Avenue by the Lincoln Woods Apartments. Gelson uh, Drive, right? Um, saw an animal across the street, debated the animal and hit a warning signal, mm -hmm. knocked out the base, knocked out the pole, took the warning signal down in total. So this is so going to be reimbursable? It'll be a reimbursable okay. okay. We turn it into our insurance. They'll yeah. give us a check. They'll okay. go after, they'll subrogate. Okay. That's okay. And on page five, the, the general pipe cleaning for 3300 bucks. I guess that yeah, we have a storm sewer that's broken down off of Meadowbrook, uh, between Meadowbrook Lane and uh, Bethlehem Pike. And so we videoed it, which is the least intrusive way to get in there to see what the problem was. Um, they cleared it to a degree, but there's a there's definitely a pipe break. And so Ian's going to take Tim out there to find out uh, what his recommendation is on trying to repair it. And it's our it's our responsibility to get storm sewer not storm sanitary sewer. soon. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Like what are the uh, quarterly checks for that? The last pay period of the month. I just noticed when the profit and loss pay period of the half when it comes to the eight. Sometimes they say in the June of the beginning of August, which is it depends on how the pay week fall for yeah. admin. Four paid by weekly, so yeah. I guess they just pay. 
Yeah, so whatever the last pay period is, you would want the commissioners is are set up on a separate on a separate okay. one. Okay. Any other door must be questions? All right, beautiful. East Mill Road Trail we talked about. Mm -hmm. Uh zoning board agenda, we talked about um uh, gold martyrs. Uh, we didn't talk about exemptions. Yeah. Any updates on the institutes? I haven't gotten anything. I know that uh, they were initially looking for was it a suspension of the position? They they were losing the email yesterday or the day before saying they're just going to withdraw. They yeah, I know he's, he kind of alluded to that, but he we haven't seen an actual withdrawal of that one. I'll, maybe I'll wait to see that before I. If the neighbors are interested, obviously. I'd like to know what I was the email saying that this guy of heat was not helping them and that the neighbors were getting organized and talking to the commissioners. And he said, Thanks very much for the heads up. And um, you know, we're doing the best we can. Yeah. He said they had engaged an architect to give them an idea what I thought that come off the code to put them in the bubble. Yeah. Yeah. So, right now, maybe no movement, but Potentially, well, I think it's going to be movement when we say to them that the additional nights uh, or the additional events um, that you want to uh, talk about because of the delays are probably not going to be approved. Uh, any comments from the board of the holding or uh, mess? Okay. Um, you introduced, you started talking about home board and if it includes, we're going to do that now. Uh, the question for us is do we want to take a decision on this temporary building right now? Okay. Um, what are your thoughts? Well, I think it could be addressed. Um, you know, even just with, uh, with expressing the township doesn't have a position, we don't want to oppose it, but we did have some concerns. And these were the questions that we discussed um, that would be helpful to the answers. I'm fine with that. They do, they do have an answer on the problem now. I just looked at yeah, the application. And he helped out. He's, he's a good guy. I mean, once you can say, look, we need money to oppose this, maybe you would I think that they're going to be pressed for time. Uh, we know they want to get this over in September. Um, do you have a sense for what may be any other questions? Like, you know, initially at the top, you know, what's the period of time that you're looking for here, and what's the what's the end play, right? Like, what what, what do you what's your long term plan? Are they committed to having. One of these spaces in the permanent space because Jim, you know, if you know the gentleman, you could probably give a call and you know, get you know, you can say, but the board's really not sure they, they want to be, you know, I guess like open minded, but you know, like this can't be a permanent solution. Um, and really look, they were at St. Paul, correct, and that they that option closed up, so they're just they're planning on being it's going to happen. For our next month meeting, correct. So we have to make a decision on what to do. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. So do you want me to call them up to the meeting and say we have some concerns? My, my concern, concern, my concern would be your dish, your yeah. board. Yeah. My concern would be when we first looked at it, parking and drop off would be fine. This would make it not as fine. So we more concern. It's taking up some of the space. And the other concern is they weren't. They were scared away from the cost of both options that are right in front of them, but they're going to be scared away from that next year, too. Mm -hmm. But this, even if we said we're not going to oppose this, it's still temporary. Mm -hmm. But the building will be good. I mean, we already got a question from them. Um, hey, if, if we don't want to connect to the public sewer, we'll need the whole thing. Yeah, the public so that's going to be really costly. But that's what you got to do. You got to connect with the public cell. We're being a business interest. 
But yeah, there's gotta be, but there's there's gotta be a time answer. restriction on and on it, and, and they should have some answers on that. that travel well, well, like, well, do we know what kind of an operator this carrying branches early care? So it's the same operator as St. Paul's, but they're partnering with this caring branches to kind of get up and running, but it's the same people that apparently everybody that's at the end there lost. Right. Great Good reputation. Mm -hmm. Now much more to spring in the second floor. Do it on the same spot. Look at that. Yeah. Well, um, what, what's the issue? Uh, I'm missing something here. This is only a daycare, right? Or are only us young children thing? So, yeah, yes, no, we're not there. Okay, but the daycare is three, four, or five year olds also, right? Correct, but they're going to be in the second floor of the church. Okay, so the church the church really doesn't want to rank the first floor. The first floor is the church. Well, well, that right. be, yeah. 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 And, and the whole thing is they can't do two years old and below in that building without sprinklers. Right. Uh, or the first floor. Yeah, like period. Unless they were to open up so the whole second floor is classroom here. So why no it's classroom, but but they're over two they're over two years old. So they can do it. Well, wasn't there a, like a music school in there or something? Uh, that Martin Saints uh, Academy. It was all oh, secondary. Okay, and that's gone. That's gone. They so moved. this is daycare using all the. Yeah, well, wait, and the gym, that their initial plan was to put everybody up top. Well, now they realize, oh, we can put the two year old and under up there. So probably half that space is going to stay there. But they need to find a place for the two year old and under. Because I think that's pretty lucrative. Okay. That's really kind of I also feel like there's a framing of the expectation that such modular spaces are just in lieu of right, temporary. And then also, I guess I, I would be kind of concerned just the way preschools, daycares work, where you're moving from space to space and like the safety of these kids too, you know, if they're teachers are moving them, and theoretically, I don't know, no one's watching when we're moving two year old from this space to another space, right? But if you're- well, They'll be prohibited from moving them over to the other building because the other building's not going to be spread over. Well, space. correct, but I'm but just saying, my concern that's, is- That's the not our wall, right? That's the building, that's building, that's building, that's building, yeah. Oh, uh, that's building, building, because oh, I thought it was a BPW for nature. Yeah, I mean, they, they may have a separate regulation, but I know our building code requires that uh, to be in a sprinkler building or one in which there's a direct access to the exterior. So every single room, yeah, every single yeah. classroom. Not saying that, you know, oh, wait, every single they would ever, every single what's the rule? Yes, I'm just saying, if there was any concern in mind, just that open yourself yeah. and avail yourself in these conditions. As the operator, as the operator, and then frankly, like, what's our opportunity to even occasionally send someone in to be a you know, two year old up here? You know, I mean, I'm not saying it would happen, I'm just saying the a general member of the general public would have to know that to report mm -hmm. that. I mean, mm -hmm. um, I'm just saying, thinking about what Chip said, opening a business is expensive, and sometimes you can't roll up the whole business, perhaps, and that's unfortunate for lots of reasons, but. That may be how the cards fall. All right, so you'll reach out then. Um, we'll see you back then. Absolutely. Please. Okay. 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 Um, partner rank by the committee. We have uh, three uh, applicants yep. for the vacancy, uh, one of which is not available for our August uh, meeting. So we could, and Parks Direct doesn't meet in August anyway, so we could pick in and uh, see if all three are available for our September meeting. And it feels like it's going to be a little quicker. Uh, it's not going to accommodate all three of us. I think that's fine. You want to see if all three can be in our September meeting? Yeah, sure. Again, great head looks like you have great heavens. Okay. 
Jane, that didn't help me out. Second report. There it is. Doing a great job. Here it is. Why did the why did the sale deadline not postponed? The year to date was twenty four thousand. This month, one hundred and thirty seven months. Well, that's a pay. Right. Right. So, if you remember from last month. Um, Oh, we're still the, realizing that. The new, that the new, yeah, the new composition audit. And this is, if you look at the bottom, see where it says estimated. We actually didn't get the bill from Republic this month yet. Mm -hmm. um, so that could change by the time your Wednesday meeting comes around. But nevertheless, it's going to be significantly less than where we had been because, as I said last month, the um, amount of high value recyclables has increased as a result of that audit or composition study, whatever you want to call it. And the uh, low value stuff is actually uh, decreasing. So we're yeah. better off. Now, over the solar, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, and we have um, yes. vacancy on the environmental advisory commission and the alternate member, the new, the new alternate member, we do. Uh, so that's the only. Right. And she, yeah, she's great. And she was just in here, which, like, we she all, just yeah, yeah, yeah. Her she's, resume she's like, fantastic. That's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dream come true. Yep. Please. Okay, and we cover. Wonderful. Sale of couch of equipment. Put the three blocks up. Any other questions on that? Pretty easy. Uh, a little bigger dual loader, we'll buy a loader, 100 grand. Makes sense. Like the rest of it. Yeah, you're okay with that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, well, it seems like a better investment than spending 40 grand on transmission on a 26 year old piece of equipment. Basically, like the rest of it. Yeah, it is. You're not wrong. All right, that's it. Uh, I don't believe we have an executive item. Let's do it. I have several. Okay. I'll start it out with the Black Horse Inn. Dan has got a tenant. Mm -hmm. uh, for the block. These, these are not executive items. No, for the items. second okay. floor. Really? These are not executive items. They're just no, right. these are just extra things that came in between Wednesday of last week and today. So, um, He's got a tenant, 900 hours for year one, year two option 925, year three option 950. Um, she's kind of like a life coach. Um, the license, um, the a lot therapist, but the license. life coach like, does all kinds of other things. So if you're okay with it, we'll get Jim's office to put together a lease agreement. Yep, no tenant improvements. As yeah. is, uh, the only thing we have to do is move the desk from the that was left there by the last person, which is fine, uh, from one room to the other room. Oh, okay. and filing cabinet as well. That's all we got to do. So that's that. Um, Carson Valley, um, as you know, we have two uh, stormwater detention basins on that property mm -hmm. um, in exchange for allowing us to build them there. Uh, we agreed to cut them. Um, two, I guess, years ago, uh, some of the neighbors on College Avenue asked us to maintain it in more of a bone, uh, like a meadow condition. We're fine with that. As long as it doesn't create more work for us. Uh, Carson actually likes that idea as well, kind of like that naturalized look. Uh, they finally, after, I don't know, when did you prepare that agreement originally with them? Probably seven years ago. Yeah, well, I'm still here. No. Yeah, uh, they finally decided, yeah, you know, it's probably a good idea that, good idea that we actually execute that. So, uh, Jim, the uh, department and me, um, well, we will be as a result of this. It's going to be a stormwater declaration and it's going to tie that up. Okay, you'll, and you'll go to send all that stuff to me. You've already got it. You sent it to me. Really? Yeah. Well, Anna did, anyway. It's the one uh, that you got, and then I don't know if I have to, yeah, I'll take them. Andrew as well. You guys actually prepared the agreement and then sent it to them. They sat on it. We got it back. Um, they revisited the idea. 
we sent it back to them. They said, oh, well, these names are all wrong now. This is no longer the trustee. This is not here. So they made the changes, signed it, sent it back to us. So, and I think it's a good idea to get it permanent as we can. Yeah. And that's what's going on now. Yeah. Uh, we'll talk about the library display. How big of the space is that? So is there a plan to like mow it twice a year? Is that the deal? Yep. The maintenance plan is attached to the back oh, there. Okay. In accordance with wildlife. 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 Um, Winmore Host Company is going to have their annual car show on Saturday, the 24th of August, in order for them to get the PennDOT um, closure of uh, Willowgrove Avenue. They need a letter from me, which I've done every year for the last six to eight years. Um, so I just want to let you know the date and then I'll be sending that letter in. Uh, the Judici Fountain, which is basically the uh, flatter circle, wider circle. Of the um, we budgeted for to have that um, cleaned and restored uh, in this year's budget. That work is going to start on the 15th. So Scott Frederick's old company is going to do it. And then the last item, and this is one I got today, is um, we were solicited um, by, I'm not exactly sure who, um, to issue a, a sign on to a letter of support for the declaratory order to yeah. the Public Utility Commission on behalf of seven boroughs who want to implement a community choice aggregation plan. This came from the Sierra. This is the Sierra. This is Sierra. You were copied on it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, this is so that they can go out and I guess they can competitively purchase uh, renewable energy that they would in turn sell back to their residents. I don't know why they want us to be involved, but we just want um, political support. Yeah. So I don't. Well, community who, solar. Who are they? Community solar is a big deal. Okay. Who, and Pennsylvania doesn't have community solar. Who are they declaring support to? To the QC? Well, wow. to the letter of support. So for all the other boroughs, boroughs, I guess. Okay. As, uh, you know. Um, it would be directed to the. PUC, PUC against yeah yeah PUC. yeah, yeah. It, it's a push to get uh, community solar authorized in Pennsylvania. So are they going to build their own system, or they're just going to go out and buy the energy that's generated from solar and then sell it back to their? Well, the, the problem is we have, I mean, the, like the restrictions we were talking about this this, after, this evening. You know, the fact that you, if you have an allied account, it can't be more than two miles away from you. You know, so they they, they want to make it much more of a, a re, kind of a re, take a regional approach to this, and not not be so you know, limited. Consortium, consortium, consortium. That's right. Yeah. Why do they want to Pardon me. This, this is yeah. why is it limited to boroughs? Well, I think I don't know specifically, but my just my my guess would be that because so it's the size the consortium. Yeah, yeah. So the, the the whole borough borough could be in the in the plant. The closest I can come to that, I don't know this for sure, is traditionally there have been a lot of boroughs that have their own electric utility. Right, right. So right. there may be something in the borough code that allows them to get involved in that, and they want to utilize that in order to do the solar. Well, I'll do a few dozen. I would I would support do this. some a quasi utility. Well, they are utilities. Like Lansdale doesn't generate one bit of electricity. They purchase it all out, but, no, I, but they have their own utility, electric utility and linemen, and they maintain mm -hmm. their own. Lots of both? Well, that line, yeah. Yeah, they have all that. So Lansdale? Lansdale, right. Lansdale. So yeah. nobody gets a people for them. Nope. Nope. They get a Lansdale. What about Amber? No, Amber doesn't have it. Uh, that's the one. Pepper, 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 Pepper,
Ephrata? Ephrata Borough? Well, yeah. They yeah. have a few buildings. Uh, I think Hatfield Borough has one. As well. Yeah, they're on the list one, here. There's yeah. one in the box, too. We're just saying, as a friend of the boroughs. Right. We support as a, your, yeah, as a fellow yeah, governmental agency. Oh, we think it's still a, a good idea to have community yeah. support. Yeah. Whatever it is, is that? I know that they're all working together, but I think that they're. Well, you could just send me that today. Right? Yeah, I did. Well, I'll read for. Uh, it seems like three dollars. Zero commitment. Just saying, we support. We support. Yeah. yeah. We support your endeavors. Yes, yeah. yeah. sounds good. That was not worth it. Okay. Then I'll, uh, yeah. I'll put this letter on our letter. Then that no one seems to be successful. You, you, you look at it. Yeah, I think we'll look at it to make sure. Make sure we're not committed on this yet. Well, I gave it to you today. You don't have an answer yet? I'm sorry. I know you were stuck in traffic and they're like, you wrote about that. I know. I didn't want to Shade Tree Commission update. I know it's very exciting. Yes. Um, in our June meeting, um, we talked about um, a we expect a budget proposal. Shade Tree Commission. Yeah. That's in here. Like we said, we skipped that last one. The the very last, up for real. Yes. Yeah, that, that was the very last one. And, and two uh, other folks are as well. Other guy. Other guy. Yeah. 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 Big time. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How about you know what? Well, we get those boys back open. There. We're so nice to you, Is that cute? Matt Johnson. It's cute. Yeah. We love it too, Steve. But we did talk about um, doing some things differently going forward um, with Shade Tree Commission members, maybe a little bit more uh, using their expertise to say where the trees go. We had a bad run here at White Wears in the Memorial Location Trees of Bonnet. I think for three or four to four that haven't, haven't really fared well. So it's ending up costing more money to replace like three trees than three not free, but now we're spending money replacing. So we talk about A, using people on the commission who actually have expertise in this area to do the planting rather than contracting it out to someone else. Um, and then having a more thorough follow up plan that would involve greater collaboration with public works and maybe having a public works person who. Uh, educated or trained more specifically um, in the follow up watering schedule. So, we know we're not planting trees, going to the effort to do all that, and then having the trees die. So, like, well, that could dovetail into the discussion that I had with Emily today on the fact on Nancy's position. So, okay. yes. Park superintendent, if you want to follow that up. Yes. You know, in, in her mind, should know trees. Should be the liaison to the shade tree commission and also be the one that identifies the places for memorial tree planting and replacement trees in the parks and watering schedule. Yeah. 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 I mean, there's they really there's plenty of people on that in that group that know what they're doing. And so and to have like simple mistakes or just like an oversight or lack of communication result in dead trees is you can avoid that. So in the interim, it just has making sure that it was planted, it was communicated to whoever's in the board. Well, that, it, that it's planted um, in the right location at the right time um, and done correctly, which there's some question that maybe that wasn't always done. No fault of anybody. Was up. Um, and then that there's, um, we talked also about maybe it being having like a, a bag protection. Like the watering bag around it, and yeah, like more having having more protection from the get go, Peter, which has yeah. happened. Um, so yeah, we just talked about some strategies that I think would probably be easy fixes. Um, we wouldn't have to go around the problem first and all the back. End. Do we have a list of memorial trees and their locations? We do publicly available. To this? There, Public, um, there was there was a list online too. I can see this. I can, yeah, we can look. That can be read on the sheet. Sheet should be Yeah. Yeah, and then maybe there's like an, I don't know, just sort of an annual reminder to take over memorial, maybe memorial day, whatever, mm -hmm. um, just to kind of remind everyone and kind of keep on the task. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like, um, with the Bethlehem 
pipe looking so good now. Um, after a couple of years worth of like seven work on. Um, <laughs> any sort of uh, beautification or like uh, yeah, some of the banners are looking a little bit worn. Um, and even the, the, the Springfield sign coming into the township, but that coming down the hill, uh, Chestnut Hill. Um, just sort of like it pushed to beautify, beautify the. Well, did they not clean up the, the garden around there this year? Because they usually, at the, the beginning of the spring, will trim all the bushes and everything and they'll remulch everything and make sure it's needed. Yeah, yeah. it's looking a little bit. But Okay. It did not say that was the construction. Did that they should have had it done before before the construction started, but and they got the banners were gifts. The banners were gifts by from Rotary and Rotary. A lot of the bottom ramen has ripped out. Yeah. How old are those? Um, they're a couple years old. They're the newer ones. The original ones lasted a lot longer than me. For whatever reason. You know, we can get different banners. So if right now the military ones are up. Yeah. Um, there's what for the other group. Mm -hmm. We get up and get the lease coming out. He's staying up in gold. Uh, November, the back of that. And then we replace them with the usually the back the one that the road would get to go up to the get in the gold. With, with, why may I not bring one of your ones with me? They just said Springfield, they have an acorn and a uh, rotary symbol on it. Springfield. Well, how many more acres? Pardon me? There's not going to be any more acres there. I know. Every year yeah. we store them for the winter. Store them for the winter and then put them back out every Memorial Day. Okay. And Memorial Day through. Cool. Yeah, people yeah. Can well, maybe we could, as the Rotary Club traditionally um, sponsored those, is that we could ask for a replacement? Yeah, I think they're aware that they're a little disrepair. Right, and disrepair. I don't know what their bandwidth is to replace them because they just forked over 30000 for a That's million. true for the bag. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Will we have a grand opening for the park? Playground? Reopening? Sure, you want. It's done. You should. You do it on Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just want to cut the. Just want to say, I think we should have one. So come some September, or maybe uh, maybe a dedication or something at uh, Community Day. Yeah. After the after the event. And one, yeah. one last thing, the as the, your as your liaison to the planning commission, they want to know the uh, direction that you would like them to take with regard to the next big project, a uh, big review project. You want them to review the zoning ordinances with the township or the uh, yes, okay. plan. 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 So what? So, you know, what's think about what your preferences are for doing that. The, the zoning is a lot more political and, and pro probably with uh, a lot more minefields than the comp plan is. You mean an application for a rezoning? No, 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 no. So the, 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 look at the rezoning, the zoning ordinances, and, and or work on the comp plan. Would the comp plan inherently also have potentially discussions about different types of zoning that one might be interested in as well? I mean, my vote is for the comp. Zoning is yeah, we do it, zoning could, could be a uh, could, could be an outcrop of the comp plan, basically. basically. Could be, basically. Right. So it seems like comp plan first. Uh, what do you think, Peter, about not just leaving in the sole hands of the planning? Um, and having certain members of the planning commission and uh, maybe the liaison from other committees that form members of the planning commission. Yeah. One of the things that I actually talked with the committee about this, sure. whenever they work on the projects, the planning commission, some of that is dependent upon what's on their plate that month. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Heavy month. Some month they can do nothing. 
Right, so then it, it kind of comes sporadically right. versus, you know, one project that's moving along at a kind of steady pace. Yep. Um, this was a couple months ago, my company, she seemed open to this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, outside of now, but when you talk to them about that. Mm -hmm. Whereas, look, I don't want to create additional meetings and create more work for people, but yeah. it would be more efficient to have that subcommittee versus the whole planning commission and say, well, finally, we have a late load, now we can work on it. I got the sense that it what was had happened most times was that second meeting of the month was dedicated to right. reviewing the zoning, reviewing the comp plan, you know. That. And, and that's all about scheduling. So yeah. Yeah. Mark controls that. He can say to an applicant who sends in their subdivision yeah. development application, yeah. okay. Um, you missed the first meeting for this month. They're going to meet on the second one, but they're tied up with the comp plan. Yeah. And you're now falling to the next one. Yeah. Okay. So there's no control all the time. Just remember that the, once the application is properly filed, the clock's ticking. Yeah. At the start of the first regularly scheduled meeting, planning so the meeting. Meeting. So the, the first regularly scheduled, and it's regularly scheduled, and it talks about something else. Okay. And, and in the meantime, Tim is reviewing the application and they're not going to look at it until they have a review letter from the city office anyway and the county. But the, the alternate that I just said would give opportunity for other people who aren't on the planning commission to be able to contribute. So it doesn't feel like they're all involved in that. Because mm -hmm. that, that particular project can be pretty far reaching. Oh, huge, huge. Yeah. And I know they don't want to do something. Check the box, but because it's the law, and it sits on the shelf, and you know, it's you know, you know. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it's the company. Sounds like the company. Yeah. Although, Zoe, uh, Nassau discount the importance of um, modernizing our zoning code. I know. Uh, you know, former, former colleague Garrett would often speak to it that we just fail to modernize our zoning code. Whether true or not, I don't know. Just just want to reflect that I heard that refrain in my, in my short time. Well, that's what we have to do with our, our laws, right? Now. Right. And other, I mean, that's the one thing that the zoning I probably use more present. And given some no. points, given stuff that's on the horizon, good no point. You know. I don't know if we necessarily want to go take that down the road, but definitely the heavier lift. We have to talk about the zoning is really big to get. But I can remember what's 10 years ago, Mike, when we tried to redo the golf course. 10, Jim, that's like 20 years ago, my friend. Right. Right. Well, and I just want to vouch for not not wanting to put more work. And I know we keep saying that, and then we do more work, but it's just expanding opportunity for participation, even at just a microcosm of the planning thing. At Parks and Rec, we've tried to tackle doing a park and park analysis, and then we get inundated with all these requests from the sports leagues and what have you. And then we by that by the time that three hour conversation is over, we're not sticking around to uh, you know talk about our grandiose ideas for. Uh, did a few, you know, well, that's why it makes, parts, makes so much sense when we have <laughs> the ability to have two meetings in the month. That second meeting, you know, is dedicated to yeah. And we, anybody who can come and invite everybody that wants to show up. And, What's the uh, commissions? Do they have problems? No, I don't. I don't, I, I, I don't get a sense there's any problems, yeah. but well, I don't know. We have a point because that, that is. If, if that doesn't happen in two years, then two years worth of projects, it could have been dealt with better. Um, and how expedient is that process, by the way? I mean, zoning it sounds like a heavy lift. What are we talking about time? Are rewriting the zoning rules for real heavy lift. We've done it. We've done it. Having to don't use theirs. <laughs> Lower okay. writing. Who's done it recently well? Yeah. And Lower writing. The, um, but they they have insulted like half million no yeah half million bucks to the well the day is is there any pre work that could be done <laughs> is there any pre work that could be done to help us prepare this and I say this because uh, you know 
Um, when I first came on, I went to a few planning commission meetings. They were tackling the saldo, which felt very large because it is large. And I felt like, wow, one day I'm going to get this giant tome uh, across my desk. I'm going to read all of this and say, yep, looks good. And I, I had inquired at the time, just early on, can I get this in piecemeal? Give me the piece about sidewalks today. Give me the piece about parking lots tomorrow sort of thing. And I, there was reluctance to that, and I didn't question it at the time. But now I'm thinking about it, can we do that somehow in piecemeal as well? And it, yeah, I felt like, and I don't know when that's gonna, that tome is coming across our desk, but I suspect it will come across our desk as a large tome. Right, could you, could you do a certain subset? So you could do a wow, institutional yeah. You could do that as thing on rewriting. Or, or yeah, you know, so, yeah, yeah. But you, you'd have to, at some point, you have to reenact the whole, reauthorize the entire ordinance, right, Jim? Well, you, well, you, when, that's, when you're done. that's a simple vote. No but to, to, to Susie's point, could you, could you take pieces of it and just sure. work on a piece of it and then reauthorize that piece of it? Yeah. You could enact, so let's say you leave the institution. Could you vote on that? Yes, and that would then do an ordinance. Yeah, this is a So I, my my memory was, and you know, just just so for context, my memory was bringing that up and feeling resistance. So I didn't inquire. Of course, I was new. I don't really know. Um, but if we can do that, I feel like that that's also a little easier for all of us to digest in piecemeal. Um, not to say that you would lose the context of the greater you know right. thing, but if it's possible. Focus on the comp plan if it could be committee because the comp plan is something that's going to take a lot of public comment and want to you want to encourage more public comment. That's, that's a different type of animal. Um, that and not to say you wouldn't encourage it from zoning, but also zoning feels very academic. Can we take it piecemeal so we can digest it slowly? Well, you can't both of those tasks are unique. When you're dealing with a community like this, that's mostly built up all, all that. Right. Now, it's not like you're talking about cornfields, you're talking about people's houses and, and buildings. Right. So, you should focus on you what, what are the things that come across? Anything you want. Right. What, what comes to us that, like, well, that goes to the book. Well, you're talking about zoning, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can do that on zoning, but. Supposed to say hey, you're not doing a map change, and then you say we're going to look at the institutional and the change. This, 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 this. Everything that's out there is done before legally done before. Mm -hmm. So it's only when you know things turn over that that's not going to have any impact at all. I would like to take more things in piecemeal in general because just to digest it more and get it done. So we're suggesting what? Comp plan. Comp plan. Okay. Second meeting of every month. Okay. Then I was starting to change my answer. Start you changed change. you change. You I was changing my answer. Well, why don't you think about it? I mean, we have time. But, but how do you but you're 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 saying specific sections that have nothing good. Just to make progress so it's not a two year project where there's been changes to the building because you're again exhausted with this fun thing you're running on. Part of the pieces of it that section that you can focus on and actually get to this section is not good. So it's like I can. I could feel, I mean, there's some salient topics right away institutional use, um, commercial corridors, right? Like I know there's a lot of talk on in, in, in where I live, right? In Winmore about how to better think, think that to move, for example. Building histories and such. All of it being a morass of things that came with it, but I would start with I, I think about it as you know, we've got a couple of large properties that are um, you know, we bought some tiny little hills, but maybe we bought five years, ten years. Yeah, um, but that's so residential, um, owned by a corporation. You know, Carson Valley, so they're a little bit looming there. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's other buildings along Hawes, too, that probably, how 
stable they are, how financially strong they are, but you know, similar to what we're experiencing with the Institute of Staten, you know, there's going to be some turnover for pretty large properties. And, uh, you know, yeah. um, Jim, you can comment on this. Any of your zoning changes that you contemplate, though, have to be consistent with your comp plan. So, I don't know what that's. I mean. That's absolutely true. I've never heard anybody ever make the argument that there was change. Right, because the comp plans are usually so broad and so general yeah. that yeah. anything fits. We want it to be good. Well, the problem is the, 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 really significant, the really significant stuff we do that would really have an impact are map changes, and they're the ones that fill from yep. you know, twice or yep. three times. Right. Mm -hmm. Right, because you could be sitting in a space that I have a commercial space. You're telling me it's going to be residential. My recollection, just for example, on North Hills, was that it's pretty dense. Right, when we try try to change into one acre or two acre, and they went, they were not happy. Yeah, so you're not wrong. They went, they were not happy. But they're they have a very uniquely shaped property. It's like kind of like a doll from the sheep, right? So the Triple A residential ordinance that we ultimately enacted had um, basically said take 50% of the property, set that aside, that's your open space. What's left over, you can develop, but you got to stay 50 feet away from all water bodies. You got to stay 100 feet away from um, steep slopes or, or you know, wetlands, and you can't build on steep slopes. and there, by the end of the day, you took 50% set it aside. What was left over, you know, if they had a, a possible density of 200 of them, it went down to like 25. And they said, we understand what you're trying to do here, but your net effect is you're taking value away from our property. While we have no plans at all to sell right now, we need to have that value to go out and borrow to make the improvements to make this place successful. That's exactly what they're saying. So, you know, like, just think about that. We're not, like, here with a hard no, but just work with us to get something that's workable. So we did. You know, it wasn't the model ordinance that the county had put together, but it, it worked. Right, that's true. Right. We, we think this property would change it to the fact that it increases so much in value. There's a legal risk that, you know, we can't do that. And if you take something that's, Developed in, in that community, that well, that just becomes a non conforming. And you don't create a non conforming everywhere because that just becomes a nightmare to you know, enforce what's permitted, not permitted. Okay, this was this, you know, now I can't do this. Right. It's, it's, it's a lot of uncertainty for the property owners, too, because they can't, anytime they apply to anything, uh, you know, by default. That's what, why a lot of, um, Comp plan uh, amendments in communities that have been pretty fully developed are really talking about some issues that may not be even considered. You know, not so much land use, but uh, you know, how do we make better handle the transportation, recreation, yeah. um, you know, uh, trails? Well, they still have a more from the south. A little bit. So we're pretty, pretty much done. The side, uh, pretty much done. We can so. think about this. Have some conversation. We can maybe we buy next month. Give them some clarity. You know, how that all. The only thing you should do on the south is that sandy part. Oh yeah. yeah. And you, yeah. well, I have not mean to particular an extent, but I mean, some of the things like roads should be X feet wide. I mean, I don't know. I mean, what do you think of that? Yeah. Um, and a lot of times, people are planning commissions. You know, put stuff in there, but it's just not doable. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, the county model the ordinance is just not doable. Not doable, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Have you tried to do anything in Abington since they got the that zoning code change? Well, yeah, and and uh, I mean, that's not the only place in this town that uh, has ordinances that you cannot comply with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll circle back to that. Okay, cool. Who else can I hear? I just have one thing. David Montgomery from the police, did he live in 
Pretty much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, he's going to uh, go on the uh, wall of fame or whatever oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. next month. And yeah, I would say it's kind of going to stay house where it gets older. Oh, no, what is widow is my neighbor. Oh, right. Well, then they probably sold their house up. I guess. Really? Yeah. They were right off of Montgomery Avenue. I don't know if I'm a bad guy. Oh, yeah. Do we know if uh, our Walgreens is slated to be closed? Do not. Um, I don't think they're deciding students for a while. That's what I heard. This is what I heard. Oh, yeah. so today, the today, they you can ask. Oh, yeah. Like Dow. Specific stores? I don't know. I still don't know if they're doing specifics. They're getting them. No, they're very, very high. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I heard the fire gun did well. One of the fire gun. Okay. Um, a lot of times when you get annual reports, they have the year, the prior year next to it, which I find on top of. Fire company, and then just the. Yeah, yeah, you got to just see that. Yeah, the fire under is just always helpful when you're looking at. Wait, so you didn't do fire company or FCC? FCC. Don't forget our second on the press panel. You're overdressed. No, 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 no. Let's keep that. I like that. Your tie is the next one. Your tie is. You good? Anything else? No shirt, no service. Right. She stuck out at the end. So fast. So fast. She got so far and she's like, oh, amazing. Right, uh, 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 yep.